This video is sponsored by Surfshark. All right, so this is the Red Magic 6, a gaming phone. What exactly makes this a gaming phone? Well, here's the breakdown. The phone has pressure sensitive shoulder triggers that you can map to different controls for that competitive edge during games. It has this red switch that takes you to game space, which is like your own dedicated gaming hub. It takes cooling to the next level with a built-in turbo fan, making sure your phone doesn't overheat while you game. And finally, it makes 120 Hz look amateur, coming in with an ultra smooth 165 Hz refresh rate. Hi everyone, Ta here. As someone who doesn't do much gaming on their phone, I didn't think this phone would be for me, but you know what? I actually had a pretty good experience. So the phone definitely has a gamer inspired design, but it's not overdone. Like if I saw someone with this phone, I wouldn't automatically think, oh, gaming phone. Now, if that's a look you're going for, you could just turn on the dual LED strips and logo, which are completely customizable in terms of color and when they come on. With a metal frame and glass back, this phone is actually pretty well built. It's got a good amount of weight too, which adds to the premium feel, but it's super slippery though, so you should probably get a case. The problem is, you're not gonna find very many cases for this. You'll probably have to grab one from Nubia. On the front, you're looking at a 6.8 inch 1080p AMOLED display with a super fancy 165 hertz refresh rate. Now, I don't know very many games or apps that will take advantage of that ultra high refresh rate, but it's easily the smoothest display I've used. The refresh rate can be set to 60, 90, 120, or 165 hertz. And I love that there's a toggle in the drop down menu, so you can quickly change it on the fly. It comes out the box set to 90 hertz. And yeah, I found that to be the perfect balance for everyday use. You'll also notice that the screen doesn't have a hole punch, notch, or anything like that. They've kept a slight bezel at the top and bottom, which I think some people might prefer, especially if you're holding it like this to game. It's a good looking display. I just wish it got a little brighter, especially for outdoor use. Paired with the screen are dual stereo speakers, one from the earpiece and one out the bottom. Sound is subjective, but if the S21 Ultra gets an A, the speakers on the Red Magic 6 are like a B plus to me. The phone also still has a headphone jack, which is always nice to see. The first time I plugged this phone into charge and the built-in fan actually turned on automatically, I was like, what? That's so smart. You know how sometimes your phone can get hot or warm while charging? Well, that doesn't happen here. The phone stays cool while charging. The only thing is you've got to deal with the sound. There's a slight whiny pitch to it, which can get kind of distracting. Note that it doesn't come with an IP rating of any sort, which is expected when you have a built-in fan. It comes with a 5,050 milliamp hour battery, and with the help of the fan for cooling, it can support up to 66 watt fast charging. But unfortunately, they only ship the phone with a 30 watt charger, at least here in North America. Two hours of gaming with a mix of Call of Duty and Wild Rift drains about 35%. So you can expect anywhere between five to six hours of gaming before needing to charge. To unlock, there's an optical fingerprint scanner and a 2D face unlock. The scanner is one of the better ones I've used. It works 99% of the time, is fast, and you can even customize the animation. Out the box, it's running Red Magic OS 4.0 based off of Android 11. For a phone packing this kind of hardware, price this low, you know there's gotta be some compromises. And in this case, it's the software. I've run into a lot more glitches than I would like. For example, sometimes split screen multitasking just won't work. It refuses to launch the second app. The first thing I did was switch to one of the built-in themes that didn't scream gaming phone. I would love to show you what some of the other themes look like, but for some reason, it just won't let me anymore. Not a deal breaker, but bottom line, the software needs some fine tuning. On the bright side, there isn't too much junk pre-installed. Most apps can be removed or disabled. I was only stuck with like a couple that I couldn't get rid of. If you're buying this phone, 
you obviously plan on gaming on it. So how well does it handle mobile games? Pretty darn good. Game space, like I mentioned, is your dedicated gaming hub. Slide the switch up to enter it and slide it down to go back to your phone. You can find all your games as well as a bunch of other tools in the slide over menu on the right. You can adjust things like fan control, the refresh rate, or even start a recording all while in the middle of a game. There's also the ability to launch certain apps like Discord in a pop-up so you can chat with friends without exiting your game. I also love how easy it is to switch between different games using the game space shortcut. The touch triggers at the top is probably the coolest feature. You can map them to any touch controls and are probably the most useful in fast paced games with lots of controls like Call of Duty. They work really well and once you get used to it, definitely give you an edge. Haptics on the phone are actually nice and sharp, which adds to the whole gaming experience, but the vibration motor just isn't strong enough. I've missed so many calls because of it. Performance is awesome. And with the help of the built-in fan, it doesn't get anywhere as hot as a phone without one. Even after a couple of hours of gaming, the phone was sitting at like 36 degrees. Doing that on something like the S21 Ultra would mean a phone that's almost unbearable to hold. So yeah, the fan and extra cooling definitely make a big difference in those longer gaming situations. So I wasn't expecting much from the cameras, I mean, you're likely not buying this for photography anyways, but it's actually not bad at all. The software quirks continue in the camera app though. Sometimes the auto exposure goes all wonky and so the pictures come out super overexposed. And for some reason, you can only use the ultra wide lens in pro mode. You literally can't access it in the normal photo mode, which is so weird. There's also so many different camera modes that it's sort of overwhelming but some of them, like the creative filters, are kind of fun to play with. Pictures are decent. With good lighting, they actually look great. They're not as bright and punchy, but you know, they get the job done. So I'm actually filming on the Red Magic 6 right now. I gotta give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Surfshark. So what Surfshark does is that it encrypts your data before it goes over the internet. So people you don't want having access to your personal information won't have access to it, especially relevant on sketchy public Wi-Fi. Being Canadian, one of my favorite uses for Surfshark is to access content from other countries. With one click, I can discover content from anywhere, including the US, UK, even Japan. What's great is that they don't limit the number of devices you can connect at a time. That means your dad, mom, brother, sister, everyone in the family is secured. If that sounds good, check out Surfshark now by clicking the link below and using my promo code TAO. You'll get 83% off and three months completely free. If you're a mobile gamer and can tolerate software that's a little rough around the edges, yeah, the Red Magic 6 is worth checking out. For gaming, the hardware is awesome, especially when you consider its price tag. But once again, the software is gonna need some work to make this an actual reliable smartphone. I can't really speak on how long and often they'll continue to update this phone, but I know for a fact you aren't going to get close to Apple or even Samsung levels for software support. In all fairness, I did receive two updates while testing the Red Magic 6. So at least they're trying, right? As usual, thank you all so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here.